This week, it's going to be the highly anticipated painting video of the Panzer 38T. That's right, I have seen your comments, I have heard your cries, and I'm finally going to be painting it up, which is why we've come back to Hobbies Unlimited. Because you see, I need some hobby supplies. So let's take a look around and find what I need to paint up this Panzer. Now, before I start to getting those supplies that I need to paint up this tank, I want to talk about something that I actually learned in the comments from a lot of you telling me that the Panzer tank that I built was actually not part of the Panzer line. It's actually a Czechoslovakian tank called the 38T, and it was adopted by the Germans when they annexed Czechoslovakia in 1939. So we're gonna go ahead and actually find some paints that's a little bit more akin to the 38T's original color scheme, which actually leans a little bit of a dark blue, and I am very excited about that. So let's head over to the spray paint section and now look for the paints that I need. They have Tamiya color. I actually am not used to being able to buy Tamiya colors, which is very exciting, and I have been looking through these. There's a lot of options, but I'm specifically looking for a little bit of a darker blue, and I think I found one. This one right here, I think this navy blue color tone is exactly what I'm looking for for my 38T. However, however, I do want to do a little bit of testing when we get home before I fully decide what I'm going to be doing on this tank. So I'm going to grab actually gunship gray as well and the and other color you got just for those of you who are paying attention at absolutely home. absolutely and then the other one that i want to get the other one that i want to get is german gray which is right here i don't think i'll end up using this one on the tank but i still want to have it because i do plan on getting an actual panzer and i want to paint it up properly so these are the three paints i think i'm going to lead with today now i need to do a little bit of other shopping because um there's some models over here that i was looking at for some of the like sci-fi models that has me very intrigued we're back over here in the section with the stall wolves products and we can see my beautiful bad batch vehicle here but no 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 that's not what we're here to look at today i actually am considering this imperial tie fighter but then i saw this then I saw this, the Interceptor. I, I was looking at this through the screen and I could not read that. Does that say, that does say Interceptor. Okay, for some reason, the C looks like a G to me, but this is the Return of the Jedi Interceptor. I really like this vehicle. I think the ship is amazing. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think I have to pick this one up, but there's a lot of really cool stuff here. And like, look, look at this. It's just the engine. Like you could just build a prop jet engine, which is really cool. And I kind of want to do that. I kind of want to try that. Is this also an engine? This is also just like an engine. That is so cool. Oh, and these are STEM. That's fantastic. I love that they have these here along with their military models. And just look how cool some of these are. Like, what? These are so amazing. I really, really like the look. Is that a dragon? Is that just a dragon? That's just a dragon. Okay, well, you know what? Sometimes you see fantasy stuff when you're looking for military models and sci-fi things, and that's what we found. I also, oh, okay, so we've got a bunch of, like, additional planes and everything here, which is very, very cool. But I noticed on this one, one, Batmobiles. Love the Batman stuff. Love some of these older art pieces. I think, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but doesn't, didn't this artist do stuff for, um what was it called? Heavy metal? Like, isn't, wasn't that something that they worked on? I feel like it was. And then, oh my God, wacky racers. Whoa. I haven't thought about wacky racers in forever. The mean machine. And then what's the other one they have? The compact pussycat. Amazing. These are so cool. There's a lot of great things. Now, something else that I just want to briefly show you guys before we get back to actually painting our tank is some of the cool train models that they have back here because they have them out open and on display. And I just thought they were really, really cool. Like there's so much interesting detail on these and I've never dealt with trains at all. Like this is something completely outside my wheelhouse. But I do think they are beautiful. And there's a lot of like other cool vehicles with it. Look at that gold one. Holy moly. I really, oh, wow, this is so cool. I love that custom paint job. 
It's so angry. I love when they do this on tanks. That is so amazing. I just love coming to the store so much. There's just constantly rad things to look at, but we should probably head home to start working on this tank. When I got back home, I wanted to test the three primers that I picked up at Hobbies Unlimited. This test is for two reasons. One, I wanted to just give the Tamiya color a try. I've never used it before, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't accidentally like, over prime my tank or something because I never had used the paint before. So that's one of the reasons for the test. The other main reason for the test is because I need to see exactly how these colors were going to dry once they were on plastic. Because it's not always one-to-one -one with what the cap colors show on the bottles. And I'm really glad that I did this because ultimately after looking at the three, I decided to go with the more neutral of the color tones, German gray. The reason I did this is because I wasn't actually sure I'd have enough colors within my paint collection to bring out some of the lighter blue color tones that I would want on the tank with the dark blue primer. So I went with the neutral gray because I knew I can make that darker and then build back some of those light color tones a bit easier. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, probably should have had some gloves on. Hey guys, I just wanted to jump into the video to remind you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, especially if you're enjoying the content that you find here. And if you're into the spicier side of the hobby, well, my only fanatics VIP page is currently 50% off through the end of the month for new subscribers. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, use the link in the video description below, and I hope to see you there. Now let's go ahead and get back to the video. With the tank now primed, we can start actually applying some of that blue color tone that I've seen in a lot of the reference material that I looked up when I was doing research on the Panzer 38T. And in order to achieve that dark blue color tone, I'm gonna use Drakenhof Nightshade a shade color tone from Citadel, which I absolutely love. Now it takes a little bit of time to get this shade fully applied to the entirety of this model, but it's okay because I had chat to keep me company. And when I was done, I was really happy because it was very much matching what I was seeing in my reference. But I didn't wanna just stop there. I wanted to start adding a little bit of texture and weathering to this model before we even get to our weathering powders. In order to do that, I pulled out two other paints that I picked up at Hobbies Unlimited. The first one is IJN Gray. This is a light blue gray that I really, really like, and we're going to dry brush this on to pretty much all of the edges of this tank. I want to focus on the edges specifically because I figured that's where rocks and other chipping might occur on the paint, and it might be maintained a little bit less. Once I was satisfied with how that was looking, I decided to come back in with one more lighter color tone called Royal Light Gray. This is another Tamiya color and I really like it. It's a little bit more yellow and it added just a nice subtle highlight to everything I'd already done to further that chipping effect. Then once I was finished with that, there was only a couple more things that I need to do. Mainly, I wanted to take care of the straps on the Jerry tanks. I wanted those to be in a leather color tone, so I reprimed them in Wraithbone and then used a little bit of snake bite leather over top of them to get that warm leather color. Off stream, I was looking at the tank and before we got to the weathering, I decided that I wanted to put a little bit of Nolan oil on all of the treads because they were just blending in too much with the rest of the tank. And I know that's kind of historical, like they really didn't seem to differentiate the tread color necessarily from the rest of the whole color, but it bothered me a little bit. So I put a little bit of Nolan oil on all the treads and on the machine guns sticking out of the tank because again, I wanted them to just have a little bit of a different color tone and I figured the Nolan oil would also just benefit as looking like soot or debris that had built up on the used machine. And I think it worked really well and now we can actually get to the weathering step. It's time to work with the Tamiya weathering powders. And I have to say that ever since I started using these things, I absolutely love them. Now I kind of go a bit crazy with how I approach this, but I do have a plan. So let me tell you what my plan was. And then if you really wanna see the full just craziness that was applying all of the powders, you can check out the live stream after this video because it's still up and you can watch it. But the idea was to start with my darker color tones first, then work into some of the metallics to do a little bit of chipping work. And then finally we would focus some rust in very specific areas. Now my idea for this tank, as I've mentioned, is I really want it to make it feel like it has been used, 
but it is in fact old, but very, very well maintained by its tank crew. So in order to do that, I really want to limit how much rust we're putting on the tank, but I do want it to look stained and like it's covered in soot because the guns have actually been fired. It's been rolling around and we'll do some dirt buildup later to further this effect. But we're going to start with the powders and we're going to use the soot and the oil stain colors first. So we're gonna do kind of an overall dusting of these colors on the majority of the tank. Then once we're done with that, to add a little bit of a chipping effect, we're gonna come in with some of the metallic powders and do that predominantly on the bottom portion of the tank, mostly where you'd expect rocks to maybe get kicked up and hit the paint, chipping off pieces of it so that you, the raw metal would actually be exposed. Finally, once I'm done with that and I'm feeling satisfied about it, I come back in with the rust color tone. Now, as I mentioned, I really want this to be focused and the main place where I thought there might be rust would be around the exhaust because that's where a lot of heat and potentially moisture are going to be doing damage. And even though the tank might be maintained by its tank crew, that's probably where they're least likely able to maintain that paint coating to help prevent the rusting just because it's getting so hot and it's being used so much. So we're gonna focus the rust there. And overall, I'm really, really happy with how this is looking, but we need to make this tank dirtier. She's still going out there into the mud, trolling around, and I really want her to look dirty. So that's what we're gonna do next. The last step is to add some dirt to this tank. And for this, I decided to pick up something new that I've never used before, the AK splatter effects, specifically the one called dirt. And I really, really like it. Although I will admit that once it dries, it's very flat looking, not in texture. It had plenty of texture and I loved that. So I ended up layering it up quite a bit on my tank, but in regards to color, it ended up being very flat. So I had the brilliant idea of coming back in with my weathering powders once I was happy with how much I had built up on the underside of the hull, onto the treads itself, and up to the sides of the tank. I came back in with the weathering powders, grabbed some of the lighter ones that are meant for sand and dirt, and dry brushed that onto the dried dirt effects that I'd used from AK. And it worked perfectly. I absolutely love the effect. And with that, we can actually look at the final results. I know that's probably not exactly how rapidly this thing could fire, but I am so happy with how well my little tank turned out. I honestly don't know why it took me so long to gather the courage to actually paint one of my scale models. It really was just like painting one of my Warhammer tanks. And I kind of expected that going in, but I still was very nervous. No more. I'm going to paint so many more scale models because I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm super, super satisfied with how my 38T turned out. I've never tried to make something historical before. And while I know I'm not 100% accurate and I do still have some work that I could do on the tank, adding the iron cross, for example, maybe even adding more dirt effects. Like I have been considering going back out to my local game store, grabbing some more AK splatter effects of different types and going back in on another live stream and doing some more work on it. But we'll have to save that for the future. But overall, I am very pleased with how this tank turned out. And I'd love to know what your thoughts are on it down below in the comments. What do you like that I did on it? What maybe that you're dissatisfied with? What could I do different the next time? Now, before I head out, I do wanna give a huge thank you to my patrons for making it so content like this can continue to happen. Without your guys' support, we just would not be doing this. So thank you very, very much. I have been Angela, and I hope you have a wonderful hobby night.